make in history at CECC. And there it is! Both placements online and dip will take it home. What a game. Take a big relapse, take a bow, and take the headsets off and start to yell. Forces a jump with it this time, and they both stand shielding in the gun smoke, but eventually they both back off again. Pops him up with a bomb and finally gets an up air right there. He was so dangerous, and if it connected, it was likely to stock so many things can kill Trajan now at 167. They cannot afford another strong hit here. Staying up high, and they go for the downer on the platform, and Kiwi is there. As soon as he gets that uh, PK fire into the grab, a little bit of a scramble situation, knowing that the laser is going to come out. Gets snared away instead. Arrow doesn't land. Neither of them get to the stage. They get back aired instead. All the way across they go. Bomb in hand. They get side beat as well. And the falling hitbox will lead to the up smash. The dangerous opportunity here. 86% again. Rolls in. This time he gets Ooh. caught. Sweet spot back here. And that will do it. Out. Gyro on the opposite side of the stage. Dash attack catches the landing. But they will not find the stock quite yet. Forward air will knock Kiwi away once more. They recover high. And they will get caught by the up air. And from the right side of center stage. High recovery here from Kiwi. They'll land it onto the high group. But they won't be able to connect it. And that's another aerial. And this one will do the trick. And what? there instead. Gamer Dog surviving. And we talked about it before. You mentioned Touch of Death character. They find the opening. Another absorb. Back to zero. Gyro is out and in play. He get it in his hands though. He wanted it at the last moment, but the won't be able to get the back throw off the mash out. Maybe let him get out instead. Damage being racked up. Linny recovering low here. And he cannot really challenge. Now a grab back throw. And it's one stock apiece. And we've seen now Tony. Tony. Oh! What? It's Fizz Rain here on, on Tree. That's defending it proper. And they might be able to make magic happen with 2k. Can they pull off a third? No. Rain Dead might be able to have a wonderful shot. Thrash doesn't see him. A Rolling Thunder is going to push everyone away from C main, but...
Welcome in everybody to Esports University's coverage of the ECAC Super Elite Week 7. It is our final week. We've managed to make it all the way here. My name is Yanni. I'm joined by my co-caster Orbital. Orbital, what a matchup that we have to cap off the regular season. It's a fight for first place. Mm -hmm. It's a fight for first amongst teams that should be first either way. It is Fisher versus Weaver, and I am more than excited to watch these two teams face off. We talked a lot about them. We've, I mean, if you've been in Collegiate, you've seen these teams around. It's no joke. I'm excited to see what they can put down on the Rift today. Yeah, you mentioned the, you know, the Collegiate play. Weber finishing third in Group A of the Western Conference. So, you know, they've got some hopes here to try to get into the Collegiate Championship. They're going to have a tough playoff run out there. And meanwhile, Fisher, uh, they're second in their group. They actually just lost a tight game last weekend to Ole Miss. Uh, but the crazy part about the Fisher roster, that Ole Miss team, is that this roster shows up for these ECAT games, right? Because they just swap everybody in and out. You never know what you're going to get with this Fisher roster, but finally we actually do know who we're going to get as they're rocking with a lineup of SimSim, Radar, Relic, DMK, and Sword Blue. Five very strong players. Yep. And on Weber's side, it's Ejexor, Zadox, Goku, Ascendi, and Mother Goose. Wheel. Of course, there we go. There it is. And already on that blue side, we see those bands come out here. This one is pretty much a staple. If you're not running Karma, it's banned away. That's just pretty much a stock and standard. Same with the Smolder that I assume will be coming out here if you don't want to give it to Weber unless you have something in the tank to take it out. Yeah, um, that champion is getting kneecapped, finally. But he is just <laughs> running over everybody. And the problem is you just leave him around for so long. I mean, he's still up on the board if they want to take him. Uh, so, you know, maybe we will see a Smolder come out. Way getting knocked off there. I really like that band. That champion is super annoying to deal with. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I appreciate it, right? The Hui is a very strong mid to late game team fighter, especially if you're trying to build into that front to back. I think it's appropriate. Looking at the Kai'Sa and Maokai ban outs, Maokai, of course, being that flex turning between uh, if you really still want to run it inside the jungle, inside the top, most likely in that support. You just don't want to deal with it. This leaves open the Varus, which I think is more than appropriate, right? Left up in the ADC roll, might as well. Yeah. A as well go for it it's a nice safe 80 carry that Cindy will be able to have a good time on and make their impact known and i'm curious what fisher is going to pull out because and it looks like you see that smolder getting hovered and locked in dmk has really shown up in a lot of these games lately it feels like every time i've watched him play he's always had some sort of impact i struggled against shogo last week but generally everybody does uh but i mean we saw him in some NECC play and he was lighting the world on fire on Ash, so uh, we'll see how that shakes out for him as they're going to also grab a Wukong for themselves. Mm -hmm. And this uh, reels into the other side as well. We were, uh, Weber also looking to do the exact same, right? If you're looking for challenges inside of the jungle, the Wukong being a very nice engager on that level six, you're looking at the Viego for Zadox. Zadox is well known as an aggressive jungler, loves making those plays, loves being kind of that carry threat with Goku as well in that mid lane, another all-star member that has a storied history of their own. Mm -hmm. This is starting to break into, uh, you know, who actually wants to get mid lane open because we're seeing the match of the supports, the ADCs and the jungle Fisher not wanting to give really too much away here in the first half. Yeah, I am curious how the second round of bands go because, you know, Ralic is a pretty solid mid laner himself. He's been around the mm -hmm. block. He's played for Conviction. He's played for, you know, CCG Futures. So if you're in the tier three scene, you've seen this guy around. He's going up against the guy that's literally gone to Worlds, right? That is, <laughs> that is a tall task. Goku had a fantastic career in CB Law. I mean, the, the, there's not too much more you could say. He's won a championship over there. I am surprised that more bands aren't going his way. You're seeing these bands go to uh, Jexor's way up in the top lane, right? So we'll see what Fisher is going to go with. They will go with the Talia. Ooh. So good roam potential here for all. And, and this also surprises me, right? We are leaning into the fact that Goku is quite strong and can come out with some very interesting pickups here. Rolic, of course, opting for the blind pick, and you actually pick LeBlanc into it. So Goku actually leaning into that kind of, okay, you want to go with the Talia. I'm going to show you that that champion will mean very little if this Udia is also locked in for Jexor. This allows for that flexibility of either tank damage and everything in between 
Of course, Sim Sim, this is why Fisher did this. They are looking for that counter pick matchup. And against the Udyr, I mean, there are some that are off the table. You're looking at the Renekton and all. Mordekaiser being hovered, this... I haven't seen a Mordekaiser in competitive in an extremely uh, okay. Well, I saw one picked up against, uh, I think it was picked up against Winthrop, and um, it didn't go so well. It was it was really, <laughs> really, really bad. Um, but I am curious to see how it is into an Udyr, because one of Udyr's hallmarks is that he's able to run circles around you, but you know your range being very restricted once you go into the Death Realm, the Mordekaiser getting stats, that's going to be really important. I must say, I'm a little confused about the lock in for Goku going to LeBlanc. Mm. UW forward onto the Legos, you're getting stunned. Yeah, there's um, th this is why I love the fact that you highlighted this earlier. Goku being someone that has a high caliber uh, mechanical level and Rala kind of stepping up to that challenge because this is. I like to call it as a mid lane player myself, an ego pick. You know this is not technically a matchup that you are supposed to win on paper. You know that this Aaliyah uh, has some skills in there that are going to cause you problems. At the same time, there are options. If you outplay, if you know those Legos are coming out, if you know those stones are coming out, you can dodge around it, you can make a massive play out of it, and you can show off that this Aaliyah is no match for the bashing sorceress. Well, Fisher College and Raleigh trying to throw stones at the glass house known as Weber as we are underway <laughs> as they're just going everybody trying to chase down this this Varus early, but only a ward in the tri brush for right now. We'll see Goku get the exchange ward down. Mm -hmm. No reason to push further, right? Well, and here's the thing from Fisher's side. I'm actually a, a little bit curious, right? And I love this answer, right? If we do get radar uh, uh, moving up into this top side to go for the red buff, which it should happen, in for a nasty surprise. But for Fisher's side, I am a little bit worried. Wukong is gonna go in, no one's really gonna be able to follow, and that's what scares me, right? You look down the line, the Wukong, only one that's really gonna dive, everyone else gonna try and peel back. So, a lot of questions on my mind as this <laughs> invade is still occurring. I have so many questions on my mind too. Like, what's gonna happen first? If we're all like missteps or anything oh like that, God. it could be disaster, but this means that Goku will be a little late getting back to lane and We'll get spotted oh, out. Oh, it's spotted. Yeah, so they don't know if it's just Goku or not. The chickens have been started by Zadox. Yeah. Uh, do they know? Is the really big question here. Well, so so there are two ways of thought, right? You have to identify this. If you are a SimSim on the top side, you'll have to identify the fact, but no, nah. it's actually shown. Oh, you're challenging. Oh, my God. Oh, it gets taken by Radar, though, and now Zadox can find himself in a bad spot. Talia's on the way up as well, and SimSim... No! the wall, <laughs> Zadox. Oh, I don't know if he's going to be able to find a way out of here. He burns the ghost out of the Mordekaiser at the very least, but... Oh, no. One of these guys is going to be picking up a kill... Is there oh, oh my it? god. <laughs> okay, so radar picks that up. Alright. You asked the question, Yanni, do they know? I think they know. I think they know. There were some big question marks there, but man, that that couldn't have gone more disastrous, right? In in theory it was a gamble. It was a right idea. If you wanted to try and snipe it away, radar might have had some trouble, but in that essence, you now set yourself so far behind. Diego is one of those champions that you do need to get ahead. You do need to have a solid start. Or you're not going to enjoy this early to mid game. You are a champion that wants to scale up, wants to be a bully. Not only that, you now given one of the premier early to mid game champions on the other side on Radar's Wukong that loves to gank, wants to hit that level six and start assisting their laners and pressure all over the map. And remember, Radar is playing out of position. Normally, a mid laner has played mm -hmm. has played plenty of jungle though. You know, this we, this Fisher roster they like to swap things around a little bit, but. You know, maybe that was just Zadox having the overconfidence. Like, I'm a jungle main. This guy isn't. Uh, we're just going to walk in and do whatever we want. And as soon as Radar was able to claim that red buff, it felt like it was very ill-fated. Mm -hmm. And in this moment, uh, Zadox has to do damage control, right? Rest of the lanes are going to have to sit there. And mid lane, of course, Goku has been doing okay and managing that 22 to 20, which I think is appropriate. Jexor on the top side, though, you're hoping to have a really good time. This Mordekaiser came out of left field. You know you're going to be kind of left on your own island. So at this point, for whatever, you're actually wondering, where's the Wukong exactly? You're going to try and start tracking the enemy jungler who got that first blood, was able to kind of situate themselves with the Doran's Blade and have that early damage spike. Yeah, and that, that Doran's Blade, obviously, you mentioned doing wonders. And now you can see Radar wants to get into this bottom side jungle. See if Turnabout is fair play. Radar will hit the plant, will spot out Zadox. 
Nobody's really on a move yet, but here comes the bottom oh, lane of Weaver okay. finally. Zadox will be able to smite the buff away. Goku unable to move, so that means Radar will be able to just walk away. Mm -hmm. And nothing lost, right? Not your life loss. However, topside, the uh, damage is in a different box, right? Wait a minute. Jexor enjoying themselves, but uh-oh. Mother Goose in a little bit of trouble. The Q hits the Viego. We'll see. Sendy over the wall, dealing a lot of damage. Goku's going to go in. Oh. Try to blow the member. Oh. Also, but Sendy gets the kill anyway. That's Radar. No! Trying to find a way to escape. DMK on the other side of the wall. Sendy. Trying to get a kill on the Mother Goose, but they can't. Rollick. Oh, my God. And Mother Goose. Goose, can they survive? Goose. They do. It's all <laughs> Weaver early on in the first fight. Remember what I was saying about the Viego wanting a good start? Oh, listen, it didn't end up there, but you just gave your lanes such an expressive lead right now. Sendy picking up two and two assists. The fact that Mother Goose didn't go down. Weaver lost no one, and it is such an impressive battle. I think it was one that Fisher were expecting to hold on to. They had the rotate, right? Sword Blue and DMK were there first, and yet they could not finish off any of those kills. Difficult time for them. Gold lead heavily in favor of Weaver. Uh, I believe that was able to purchase. Yeah, Sandy able to spend that gold now and utilize it in lane immediately. Yeah, I mean, it's just a difference in how strong the AD carries are, right? Sandy was over the wall dealing so much damage uh, with the Hail of Arrows, right? It does a lot of damage at rank one. So it's just really good stuff. A really well-picked fight out of Weaver. They're going to get all the grubs on top of it too. They're not even giving up a dragon for it. Mm -mm. This is... After what occurred in the earlier stages, this is by far the best situation we were going to ask for, right? When you lose your jungler, it, it feels bad. You're able to bounce back. Now you're able to take control. And for Fisher, you're a team that does kind of want to scale up, right? You want DMK to really have that high scaling impact that a smolder wants to have. But this acceleration now puts a little bit of pressure on you. I do expect Radar to start looking towards that bot lane, start trying to help out this uh, DMK to get a good laning phase because I expect Sendy, Mother Goose, to start getting in the face of the Fisher bottom lane. Yeah, we'll see. Radar will need to hit level 6 in order to make an impact quickly. Meanwhile, Zadox is here on the bottom lane. Sword Blue is very slow, tries to hop back to DMK. DMK oh! gets hooked. He let DMK get hooked. And they're all on top of him. Oh, they're going to take him out. No. They're going to take out the Brom for good measure. Double kill for Sendy. Radar, luckily still alive no. for right now. Flashing no! forward. And Sendy finishes him <laughs> off. It's a triple kill. It's a small consolation prize that the shutdown went to DMK, but my god, Sendy. You know, I mentioned that, yes, I wanted a little bit of bullying to the bots. I didn't think it was going to be that finite, right? There was no way DMK and Sword Blue could get away, and now Zadox allowed to pick things up. Weaver starting to accelerate the pace of this game very, very nicely, and Goku and Relic might just be on the wings watching. Uh -oh. This could be a problem for the side of Weaver. Okay. Zadox is forced to flash away. That means Mother Goose is able to walk it out. So Fisher just taking L's all across the map. It is not mm. looking so hot. But again, you talk about the shutdown that DMK got there. Uh, DMK has been really a rock for Fisher and has done pretty well in his recent games of AD carry. You saw for a second there, he's down about a thousand gold already. Obviously, mm. you know, scale up with Smolder and win, but... You know, Weaver, they are very acutely aware of that strategy. Mm -hmm. That strategy is one that's known forever, right? Once you get past at this point, I think it's like a 35, 40 minute mark for DMK. Then you're going to start hitting. Then you're going to start being a damage that here's the problem. Uh, Mother Goose and Sendy, my personal take on how to deal with the smolder. Land a hook, get CC, right? Very immobile. Uh, yes, you have the ghost and the flash. It, you're still pretty immobile if you are just trying to run away. So... As long as Mother Goose and Sendy are willing to expend some abilities, expend that go in, maybe a little bit of HP bars, I feel like they should have a pretty concrete hold on DMK's life unless these lanes start to get uh, rolling for Fisher, unless we start seeing kills fed into DMK's uh, pockets. Yeah, and you know, speaking of the lanes getting rolling, right? Rollick hasn't made a move yet, is now level 7, does have the Weaver's Wall to be able to do something, but they're going to need to try to figure something out. Smolder's a hard lane to gank for. It's not like there's a whole lot of power there, even after he hit six. Mm -hmm. And in that same vein, I mean, yeah, Goku in this mid lane. At this point, we were wondering, you know, why is this LeBlanc pick picked up? We, You and I both questioned it. Hey, you're picking it into a Talia. I think 
one of the thoughts is, yes, it's a skill expression. The other side is just try and keep Rollick inside of this lane, right? Mm -hmm. Don't allow him to farm up early. Uh -oh. No, no. Oh, no. Sim Sim. Oh. Sim Sim dead. I wasn't watching, Yanni. I feel so bad. <laughs> it was just a slow burn. <laughs> nah, it's all good. He just kicks the tin can oh. down the road and... <laughs> uh, you know, Jexor, credit to him. Uh, that means everybody's yeah. winning now. We weren't sure. We were like, okay, you know, early on, SimSim had a CS lead, but now everybody on Weaver is just winning. It is just all them. They've got the W's oh. in the chat right now. What a hook. They say send it oh. as Sendy is able to deal a lot of damage to make sure that Mother Goose is the one that gets the kill. And we, we've talked about this, right? Anyone that, oh no, not, not Rollick as well. Okay, just a chunk, just a chunk. We talked about this though. You and I have been in collegiate. Anyone that's watched Fisher, uh, some people have concerns watching them, right? Which Fisher is going to show up? Is it a Fisher that is strong, is confident in their play, and is able to take control of the game, or is it a Fisher that may wane and wane throughout the entire series? Of course, this is just game one. Granted, Weaver had thrown some amazing curveballs in their face, so maybe this isn't the best to go on. But I'm I'm wholly impressed by what we were throwing down right now. They look very strong. They look very calculated. Uh -oh. And even in this, this is going to be a change. Yeah, Sendy is in so much trouble. Knocked up, exhausted, okay. and okay. is going to go down. They're going to give that one over to DMK. Yep. Shut down for him. He's got two shutdowns now. As uh, Goku just wins the <laughs> 1v1 against Raleigh. Yeah, and this is the difference, right? Fisher are playing to catch up. Oh, hold on. Weaver Death are Realm? playing to win. Yeah, Death Realm, I mean, this is this is gonna be a long burn fight. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if they're able to close out on any kills here. So is that shield available if he wants, which he will pop, but Jexor is just there it he is. can't really do too much for him. He is gonna go back in. He is trying to take this fight. He's dodging on the claw, he's getting lower on HP, but oh, so is Mordekaiser, and Mordekaiser <laughs> falls again. Lane to lane, we are watching exemplary individual skill. Jexor walking around the Mordekaiser abilities, making sure that area of effect does not affect them. Waiting it out, baiting it out in the mid lane. Goku giving a lot of handles. Remember, that kill on the bot side was only on Tsendi. Remember how much they extended. Oh, Relic well. now on the top side, trying to get a revenge kill. Yeah, I don't know if Jexor's going to be able to find his way out of this. He's taking a lot of damage. Oh, okay. Matching TPs come out, though. So Goku's going to land first. They sidestep. No! Knock off. No! Oh, Goku, don't do it to him. Puts oh on the my fancy God. feet there, but Rollick's light flashed before his eyes. This game is getting way too breakneck for what should be happening, right? Fisher want a slower pace game. They do not want this game to accelerate, and yet we are forcing them to. Take a look. This is another envy by Zadox. Yeah, I mean, this game's going at a thousand miles an hour right now, Orbitals. We have a teleport coming down. Mother Goose find himself in a little bit of trouble. Ooh, a little more auto attack. Ooh. He does get stunned up. You saw that Chains of Corruption miss prior, and that means that Mother Goose will fall. And that's actually big for Fisher, you know, punishing this aggressive play because in the mid lane, Goku has just been wailing away on this tower. First brick goes their Six way. Rubs. Yeah, and, and now Radar looking for this dragon now has flash. to run all their life. Oh, he's in so much trouble here. The chains yeah. are out too. Good seismic shove, but it's not going to do enough to take down Zadox. Goku gets kill number three. Again. Fisher trying to pump the brakes as hard as they can. They got the kill on the bottom side, uh, and they were like, yes, we got it. We got it. We're good. Maybe we can set up a dragon. Weaver are constantly drawing attention of Fisher every which way. Whichever direction it goes, it's just never in their favor. So, Fisher, desperation in, like, desperation mode is fully going on right now. Weaver, they're chilling. This breakneck pace, they're vibing to, like, fog throughout the road right now. They are zooming at 80, and they don't care. Oh, yeah. They have the Euro beat in their car turned yeah. up to 50 <laughs> on, on their radio. Windows down. You know, sunroof <laughs> open. Just 90 miles an hour. Even, look, Mother Goose still going 90 miles an hour. Goku waiting over the wall, waiting for those cooldowns to burst out DMK. You can see it yeah. wasn't even a full combo, and it did so much. Well, you didn't have to, right? Goku actually got the flash out of DMK, and that's perfect. Now you give Sendi that advantage in lane again because Sendi is going to have that value. Yeah, you're just going to look. Now you got to run even further, but it's just this pressure, right? DMK was the big shining star, and now you don't have that value anymore. Well, Goku could find himself in trouble. Gets knocked up there by the Wukong. Will be able to distortion mm. back away, but looks like he's a little trapped here. Here comes uh -oh. the Zootier trying to disrupt here, trying uh -oh. to save him. Looks like it's for now. Zadox is here. Uh -oh. So is Mother Goose. Rollick gets targeted. Flash uh -oh. of the wall still alive for right now. Backside of the fight. Radar gets blown up. Oh. And Zadox undeterred through the exhaust manages to get the kill. And now Sword Blue is going to be the next target. He gets rooted up. He will be able to flash over the wall. 
to survive. But again, it's just Weaver continuing to take every single fight. You ever seen someone get lapped before? Like, th yeah. this is getting lapped about three oh, times over, a right? Like this... there. Hold on, Sword Blue oh, ignited no. down to about half HP. Zadox also in the area. I'll do it, Sandy. Do it, Sandy. Sandy. Do it. Disruption <laughs> lands. Pulled into the Death Realm is Nautilus. So, Mother Goose, the goose might be cooked for right now, and it is coming out of the Death Realm with the extra stats. But I'm not sure if that's quite going to help you there when you've got Brawl Pass. And thanks to Zadox, Mom coming through, but it doesn't deal enough damage. Still wanting this fight. Oh, the Zadox. Stun. Great stun on oh. DMK. It's a double kill for Zadox, but he dies on the other side of it. Not much found from the seismic shove. And with Weber, with Weaver, it's on site in these fights. <laughs> it's because they can, right? Every single champion of theirs is now unlocked to fight. We saw how long some of these fights are going on. It's because Fisher has not been allowed to farm. Take a look down their itemization, right? They're sitting on components right now. Rolik is sitting on components. Inside the jungle, we're sitting on components for Wukong. Like, some of these champions are just not... It's still going! Fight forever. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> That's just, that's just what it is. I mean, yeah. uh, Orbital, look at this gold disparity right now. Yeah. Is this something that a smolder can dig you out of? No. Uh, I, I will say this. Someone's going to yell at me in the back room. I say no. There is no way I'm unless Weaver... Uh, yeah, like, I, I'm going to say this with full confidence, especially since I know Weaver and some of these players. Like, they're, they're from this deficit, unless Weaver walk in one by one and feed the three current bounties over to DMK's life and then wait another five minutes... I really don't think Fisher can actually dip them out with DMK alone. Where it actually comes out is I think Sim Sim, Radar, and Relic need to start helping out a little bit, grouping up, really playing as a squad. They're right now getting tugged into individual fights. Their strength is when they can kind of prep themselves for this battle, use that Weaver's wall to adjust the rest of Weaver. And I, I think that's where it comes from. In DMK alone, I don't think so. The rest of the team has got to step up. He only has 106 stacks at the 16 minute mark. That's um, that's pretty rough. There's there's not a whole yeah. lot you can do. Uh, Sim Sim, you know, less than 100 CS too. Uh, down 30 CS in the top lane, down a kill as well. I mean, uh, Jexor got so many plates. I mean, this is this is why this game is spiraled out of control. And mm. Fisher do need to find some way to stop the bleeding because if they can, you know, Smolder might be able to get the job done with a little bit of help from the friends. Rift Herald looks like it's been started up by the side of Weaver, and they will be able to take it down. So we'll see if Twitch chat makes an appearance uh, and if Zadox has his driver's license. I, I think Zadox does. I mean, 4, 2, and 7, if you don't decide to go driving, I would be very, very surprised. The other side is Sendy. Three items fully completed, 131 CS, and dominating. Or two, sorry. Uh, boots are technically an item to me. Eh, I mean, listen, it's... at least at least magic pen boots are. I, I agree with yeah. that. Magic <laughs> pen boots are actually a core. It's so good, right? You know? yeah. That's why they build it, it every it's game. It's very powerful. But, it's yeah, very, it's... very powerful. Oh, no. Oh, 1v1 <laughs> here. Goku will land the first chain. And does have enough room to be able to go over the wall. So this is kind of rough. Radar is here. And the second distortion should be able to get him out. Ooh, oh, slow from Sword Blue. Flash distortion. Can you land any more? It looks like nope. Fisher has decided we can't pursue this any further because of the pressure elsewhere. Rift Herald getting used on the bottom side of the map here as well. Yep. Every time we watch this game from now on, this is all you have to watch. If someone's making a decoy play on one side, there is another one to two plays on another side of the oh. map. This will continue every single time. Twitch chat. Are we going to see Twitch it? There, chat. it is. there we go. <laughs> I thought Zadox wasn't oh, going to no. do it. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, there's a fight in the mid lane here. Mother Goose in a lot of trouble. Stop oh, my God. Oh, my away. God. It's a two-item <laughs> Sendy, and he's rifling away. He's got a double kill for right now. Make it a triple kill. Next target going to be DMK who flashes oh. over the dies. It's a quadra oh. kill, and everybody is gone. It's an ace for Weaver. What did I say, right? Listen, when one play happens on the side of the map, there's something else going on in Fisher. That was a last-ditch effort fight. I understand where you're coming from. I respect it. It was a 4v3. The problem is Sendy and Goku have a majority share of the gold. Nasty 3v4 from Weaver's carries. So impressive, and this is why they are currently winning this game. From minute three, they have not slowed down. Ever since Zadox died inside of the jungle, said screw it we are avenging our jungler and taking this game turns out second item terminus still lives up to its name because it looks like it is the <laughs> end for fisher here in game one as weaver is just 
if you could be any more in the driver, they're the pilots of this plane right now. <laughs> they're not even in the driver's seat. They're flying. They are cruising at an altitude of 10,000 feet in the air. Uh, it's pre-20 minutes, too. Soul Point now on top of it. Uh, the question is, Orbital, are they going to try for Baron, or are they just going to say, you know what, we're fine with the status quo. Let's focus another lane. It's either you die slowly or die quickly. Like, those are your two options True. right now. I, I hate saying that, and to me, I give respect. You know, that mid lane fight looked like they were just like, yo, let's send it, let's do whatever we can. I appreciate that. Do it again, right? Go for the steal, go for the crazy. You know things really can only get worse from here. Unless, again, Weaver do something completely out of the ordinary. Unless they give themselves over and, I mean, try and let themselves die. Honestly, it just doesn't look like it. Like this, right? Like this. This is ridiculous right now. Chexor has not taken a lick of damage. Yeah, the good news is Rolic does manage to survive. Uh, Goku could find himself in a little bit of trouble. Mother Deuce is here to try to turn it. Big knock up. Mom coming through. It looks like oh! Goku, man. Goku <laughs> blows him up and is still alive somehow. Will finally... No, he, he just lived that entire time. That's crazy. Yeah. I thought he just died because he just disappeared, but he just hit all the W's. That was welcome to LeBlanc clones. If you had not played against LeBlanc in forever, you get tripped up learning when they distort. Whenever they go back, it is a problem. D meanwhile, in this game, while that fight is going, you don't normally see this Baron being taken while an inhibitor is being taken as well. Weaver are literally doing everything and then some in this. Well, Jexer will not be able to get this quite yet, although he does have barren up minions if he wants to escort them in. Meanwhile, the rest of Weaver are going to head to the top side, take out the top inner turret. Zadox and Mother Goose looking to lead the charge. Goku does have teleport available. It's only a matter of time as Fisher almost completely choked out of this game. The referee has not stopped the fight quite yet, though. What a game. 17k gold lead here for the side of Weaver. It is just absolute one of the cleanest games I've seen from a team at this level in quite some time, especially against the guys over on Fisher, right? They are high quality players. Orbital and I talked about it in the pregame. These guys have been around quite some time, have won their fair share of trophies in the collegiate space, uh, and they're just getting absolutely dominated right now. We'll see if they're able to hold the line or if there's anything that they can do to get some confidence back here as Weaver is looking to shove in. They will be able to take out the bottom inhibitor as for right now, but Radar in the top side against uh, Jexor, and it's a four-level difference, by the way. Ooh. Rolic almost getting completely bursted out there. I, uh, listen, this game was too hard on me. Weaver literally just crashed my internet pretty hard. Like, that was... They are playing at such an exceptional pace. They they could end with only one inhibitor. They want everything on the map right now. Their, this is the final stand for Fisher. Their upload speed was just a little too fast for you, my friend, because <laughs> they are just, you know, speed run League of Legends any percent right now, as there's only one Nexus turret left standing. Nice. Members oh. of Fisher huddling around it like a campfire. Radar on the back line, looking to knock up three, but he gets blown up immediately. Meanwhile, Swordblue is the one that gets rid of it. Mom comes through, but doesn't oh, do enough damage man. as the Mordekaiser will fall. DMK trying to kite this out, but doesn't have an Executor or anything to try to stay alive. And that should do it as the Nexus will fall. Far too many minions. And Weaver just come in and clean up Fisher in game one. I hope my internet holds strong. Because that was a game of... Weber knowing how to push their leads like that early fight inside of the jungle Zadox we saw what they were trying to do right get a little bit aggressive put that uh put the Wukong behind and then snowball out from there when it didn't work Resta Weaver said, okay, we got to pick up the slack. Let's start going. Sendy in the bottom lane. We were talking about, you know, Goku in the mid lane and Zadox being some of the stars here. Sendy popped off a little bit of help from the rest of the team. And then Mother Goose and Sendy just ran the entire game. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot that you could say that Fisher needs to improve on, but really it was from top to bottom, right? Uh, since the start of that, of the game, that fight that occurred in the river, uh, we were just never let off the gas pedal. It's just a really tough time for Roman. That's a fight that Fisher engaged themselves. Uh, mm -hmm. If there's one thing that I want to see, uh, I need to see Rollick show a little bit more. I mean, 
uh, this guy, I, I saw one Weaver's Wall, maybe two this entire game. I mean, Goku really kept him down. And this is something, Orbital, that we expected. Rolik is going to have to step up here and try to figure something out for game two. And as a matter of fact, so is Radar. You know, uh, we know that Radar is out of position in this game technically, but, you know, Zadox just kind of got the better of him at every single corner and was there first for every play. I, I think a lot of that does go back to what you pointed out, right? That first initial fight that uh, that Fisher decided to go for, that was the turning point. And, and I actually put a lot of this more on Weaver's excellent execution mm -hmm. of taking that lead and going instead of Fisher actually collapsing under the weight. I, I honestly just think Fisher, their comp was not built to withstand such a such a heavy onslaught from the early game. They're good in terms of being able to build their blocks up. They were able, if everything was even, they could build their way up towards that mid game and then let DMK, you know, Rollick really show off. They were just never given that opportunity. And honestly, really big shout out to Weaver for that. Yeah, huge shout out, some plaudits to them. But this is a three game series. So we're gonna take a very short break. And when we return, we will come back and we will show you the game two draft between Weaver and Fisher. Don't go anywhere because this is a heavyweight matchup.
Welcome back, everybody, to ECAC Super Elite Week 7 for League of Legends. Weber and Fisher going at it head to head. And we were just, they were so crazy that last game, Orbital. Uh, they're just so far ahead, just absolutely stomped Fisher into the dirt. It was a really, really rough showing for them. They had a game, they had a team that had some late game scaling to it, but couldn't get it online. We'll see how their fortunes change. And the first thing is, well, they're swapping sides here. Mm -hmm. They are swapping, and that really changes some aspects, right? We saw an R5 uh, Mordekaiser come out, which obviously we didn't really get to see a whole lot on the top side because our entire vision was dominated by this bot lane, the first big Varus against that counter pick Smolder. It was a bottom lane smorgasbord, and then it was just chaos all around. So I'm, I'm excited to see what champions come out here, if there are specific counter picks in that bottom lane, if there's more focus emphasized inside of those ADCs instead of just, hey, let's grab Varus and Smolder. Yeah, they were serving Dragon for dinner, uh, and we were took advantage of that. You know, it's on the sushi on the sushi plate and everything. You know, you can you. I'm sure you'd enjoy some smolder sushi, no? Hey, yeah, yeah. I I don't know if I'd actually like Dragon. I hear the meat's kind of tough, but uh, we'll see. Maybe in the future, I'll I'll give it a shot if it ever enters into my local area. Yeah. So, all right, a lot of things went wrong for Fisher. What do you think was the number one thing that went wrong, and how are they going to be able to correct it? going into game two all right so i think the entire thing hinged and i said it at the end of game one kind of post is i think they just chose a bad fight and that was really it this is one of those games that you you lose one fight everything else crumbles afterwards that one fight where you thought that you could take an early game fight with smolder about half mana uh braum already in the in the front and you do not have a very strong damage output it just led to chaos, and after that, unfortunately, the kills went the way of Sendy. From there, you can start seeing really that bot. It's just, it was really the very definition of Snowball. And if if the side of Fisher want to play another mid to late game composition like that, I don't think they're allowed the option of taking a risky fight like that. Because Weaver right now seemed to have a good answer. Yeah, it just it felt like everybody on Weaver too were just equally strong, no matter what happened. You know, Cindy obviously mentioned it getting very far ahead, uh, and it was the early fights that sunk Fisher, especially that early jungle pathing. What what happened over there? You know, <laughs> listen, I like the idea, but once Radar did not land the smite onto the red buff, it was over. Because yeah, sure, you had your level advantage for half of a second, and now you're even on levels. Oh yeah, plus your opponent's got a red buff. I'd imagine that Fisher's early game will go much better if A, their, you know, jungle skirmish at level one goes a little bit better, or B, they just don't have one at all. <laughs> that was one of those. I think it was actually a Zadox that came around and missed that smite, and it was just disaster from there. And then uh, I agree, it was just the fall down uh, on the side of radar. After that, it was just you were pathing okay, but you maybe let it get to your head. So now on the blue side, Fisher, I'm very curious, right? You opted for Mordekaiser on the top side as your big all-important synergy factor it didn't really have impact now you get first pick on the entire side ADCs were picked up last time let's see if that's the same here and for Fisher, I actually really want to see a targeted ban either at that bottom lane into Sendy I mean even I know Varus is not appropriate I think as a ban it's just you can work around it at points I I would like to see some respect handed there it's certainly a good ban, but it's also something that's very first pickable. That's something that yeah. DMK can certainly play. Uh, so I, I am interested in what direction they're going to go in. So far, Fisher oh. has decided their bans are going to stay exactly the same. And I know why you're ooing as that yeah. Varus was banned away by Weber. Goes to the fact that that is a first pickable champion. Mm. And I am... Interested to see if this is actually going to take the space of that smolder, or if you're actually going... Yeah, so it is taking the space of the smolder, and I think this is actually a little bit of bait. If Fisher actually opt for that smolder once again, I think it's bait. I really do think it's bait. At this point, we were have multiple contingency plans. You need to go for something a bit more flexible. I like the Maokai here. This was banned out in game number one. Very appropriate. You go ahead and flex it out. Weaver now have to kind of blind pick their way through these next two. And if I'm Weaver, I am saying that, yep, this is a Maokai jungle. You sure you could put you know you could put sword blue with the Malkai, but after what happened in game one there with radar, I would just be on full confidence that 
This guy is going to play a dog jungler, for lack of a better term. Well, on the <laughs> other side, Ash and Lee Sin. Ash, as we know, very, very high priority oh champion because it can go anywhere in the bot lane. And I wonder, it looks like we will see our first taste of Kog'Maw ever since the buffs that he got. Oh, yeah, the buffs, I feel, make everyone a little bit too happy. But at the same time, this is another champion for Fisher that... I'm a little bit scared about, right? It needs to scale a little bit more into that middle lane. You have the shred. You have the ability to kind of hard stop anyone in your way. Uh, with that shred, you can start melting through them. But if Weaver are allowed to get in your face once again, it's going to be a problem. The Braum also helping out, just denying a lot of that advantage. And now you go right back to the same game that we had in game number one in the band phase. Top lane, going to start getting taken away. Jexor and SimSim both didn't have super impact. Still had a lot of value in their own way. Yeah, well, we'll see what ends up happening. Uh, I like the Udyr ban here because Weaver would have first opportunity to go pick that up if they wanted, but uh, clearly just focusing on oh, the yeah. top lanes here. Simpson not going to be able to do too much. PTSD coming yes, in here. Yes, this is a very good ban. This is what Shibby, our good friend, would call a trauma ban for yep. sure, but this does mean that Goku has an hey. entire wide array of mid laners to go to, and Ari is one that has been gaining a lot of popularity. In fact, Jensen played her a little earlier in LCS. Mm -hmm. And the response coming out as Tristana, these players are moving pretty quickly through this phase. And I like that Tristana in the mid lane, a little bit indexing into the AD factor, but I think it's still appropriate. Now that Jack's blind picking the top side, Weaver, you can show off a little bit. Yeah, this was banned in game number one. Throw down. You know, Jexor won the first round of fights, <laughs> even with that Udyr. Now you got an even better one. If this is not a Flash Ghost Darius, I'm going to be very, very sad. Yeah, I don't want it if it ain't Flash Ghost Darius, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is a really awesome draft that both teams have put together here. Yep. But it, again, just matters. Can Fisher take it to the late game, right? Uh, Shogo has said that Kog'Maw isn't a champion that you need to wait for six items, right? The spikes on two items and three items and four items and that people should be fighting a little bit more in the mid game with him. So I wonder if Fisher will subscribe to that theory. Uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see, right? They have the nice power out of the Tristana. Their siege potential is really, really strong. So long as things don't go really, really wrong for them like they did in game one, I think they'll be in a pretty good spot. I, I think you hit the nail on the head there, Yanni, because... You said it. The crutch is, it doesn't happen like game one. Weaver, I'm pretty sure, can do the same thing as game number one, right? Absolutely, now, they can. Yeah, and, and it's just terrifying to me. And I I am surprised as well. Dragon Man Kim did not opt for the cleanse. I personally am a complete weakling in Scary Cat in the bot lane. Looking at an Ash and Ari and, and a Braum, I would have absolutely ran cleanse. Like, I would have hardcore just locked that in, been like, I, I don't want to do anything. But... I am wholly surprised. DMK is saying, hey, that last game, that was just a mishap, right? And maybe Fisher are saying the same. Game one, we had one bad moment, and it just snowballed out of control. We aren't going to let that happen again. If that's their mindset going in, I appreciate it. That is the best mental reset that you could ever ask for, which is why they're going for this style a little bit more uh, aggressive in those summoner spells. I actually kind of like the ghost on DMK here, mostly because the CCs are, are all skill shots, right? They're not point and clicks. Uh, the one really interesting thing when it comes to summoners is take a look at this Jax. Has Ignite in the top lane. <laughs> SimSim is looking to get solo kills onto Jexor. Look at that. He's even got a three gold lead right now. I mean, this game may as well be over. <laughs> Uh, I mean, listen, fish are fish, right, all day long, but this is because you know Jexors is most likely running an aggressive summoner set as well. Like, you can't go TP, you're going to lose out on that. So I love that, right? SimSim Sim stepping up to the challenge as the Grandmaster should and not letting up in any way. I'm very curious to watch that top side because these are two champions that also, I think, hold a lot more value come the mid game, right? We saw the Udyr and the Mordekaiser not really have anything to do with the team, just kind of did their own thing. These two, I think, actually want to get into the mix a bit more and snowball off of those team fight kills. One thing that we didn't really talk about is you saw for just a brief moment there, uh, the Ash stun off of the Braum passive. Ash Braum is a really oppressive lane. So while Fisher seems to be in firm control right now, that may not be the case moving forward. It's really important that their laners get off to really good starts. And it looks like Relic should be able to against Goku. You take a look at the health bars real quick. Uh, but up in the top lane, as long as your Jax is, you know, even keel at the very least, you know, you'll be in a really good spot. 
And that'll mean that radar is opened up to do a lot. Mm -hmm. Not only that, though, you're walking over that ward, so even though radar is enabled into some of these opportunities, you are still spotted out in some of those scenarios. Zadox, I think, got the early... Or no, that was actually Goku that dropped the early ward down by those Raptors and gave themselves a little bit of space, so... How much time are you actually going to burn here? Right, Goku slowly holding up the lane, but that's a jump in. Oh, he put the bomb on the wrong target, which means Goku oh. will be able to survive without burning a wow. summoner spell. Oh. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Mother Goose in a little bit of trouble, hooked back in. Bio Arcane Barrage from DMK, trying to do as much damage as possible, but now it's Sendy mm. turning it around, slowing him up mm. with that powered Q. Sword Blue could find himself in a little bit of trouble, but Weaver of bot lane punching back a little. Honestly, big win for the side of Weaver. I think, you know, with the ADCs now almost even in the uh, in the HP department, I think that's a very well-played fight. Mother Goose was not in a good position, so this is actually prime, but the junglers are now getting in on it 1v1. Yeah, this is not a 1v1 I like for Radar, especially the yeah. fact that he's down a level right now. This is getting chased uh -oh. down by Zadox. Oh. Two lands, it's going to be first place. Oh, he's going to be able to no. run off over the wall, but a good counter-strike. Following it up is Rollick looking for Zadox. No! To get him. And the oh! Oh my god, look at all the damage. Oh like, my god! It's going to be a triple <laughs> kill for Zadox. The bleed from Jexor helping out. It's a double kill for DMK on the bottom side, though. I, I, listen, that was a little bit of chaos everywhere, but I love it. Zadok, okay, I'm sorry, I'm a Zadox fanboy by heart. Zadox is someone that I've watched over the years just be so good in multiple scenarios and can very much hardcore carry the game on their own, so the, the Leeson makes me very happy. And that already turns this upper side of the map on Fisher into a very difficult situation. That Leeson can now roam outwards. However, as you rightly pointed out, double kill down to the bot side, the most optimal Double kill, right? DMK picking up two on a Kog'Maw that we said we want to see those items come through. So right now, both Weaver and Fisher have their strong points that I expect they are going to start forcing to try and get further ahead. You did say one thing, though, Orbital, is that can Weaver just do what they did in Game 1 here in Game 2? And with Xanox <laughs> with the Warhammer plus the Pickaxe, you absolutely can just do the same thing. So we'll see if they're able to keep the tempo up here because if they are, if they do get into another down and dirty fight that they like, they could just pull away here in game two. Mm -hmm. the, the problem is I don't think uh, Fisher are actually going to want to go into those fights right now, right? You know Zadox is strong, so why would you actually opt into mm -hmm. some of these crazy fights that might give the lane opponent some freedom, right? This is the appropriate call. Fisher walking away from this dragon, realizing that Zadox's power and respecting it is their... Even the bottom lane, DMK and Sword Blue, trying to hold this wave underneath their own tower so this gank doesn't actually fire off as strong. Yeah, just trying to break the freeze up a little bit here, which I really like, as Radar is not really able to do too much, and your laners don't need your help at this point, right? So mm -hmm. Zanox can go wherever he pleases. He's cosplaying Dr. Mundo right now. <laughs> Walk where you please, do what you please, and at this point, it's uh, called... Be slow, be steady, don't go too crazy in the mid. Or top My master's might. Different story though, Getting yeah. used, counter strike here, the apprehend as well, the stun goes down. Oh, Jack Stewart, uh -oh. can you get five stacks? Mm. Misses the Q on the flash, which means that Sim Sim is alive for now. No, that was much closer. I think if Sim Sim actually had flash, that would have been a difference. We didn't even notice that Sim Sim had lost flash in that entire, well actually we did in that, in that triple. Yeah. But rightly now having to back away. You cannot stay up here any longer. You expended most of your abilities. You're about half health. And a 3-0 oh, as Zadox is going to be roaming on your face. So it leaves this Grubs take for the Lee Sin. Yep, we're seeing Radar come down near the mid lane here. Looking to make mm. a play onto the Sari and does. They're going to leap in on her as well. Trying to spear rush away. Can you get one more no shot way. off? Goku will survive. <laughs> the Grubs will go to Weaver. Just nothing going right for Fisher. I love the fact that Jexor ate that right in front of Goku, right? Like, yeah, Goku was going to recall. I get that. But it's just very funny watching someone that's like 20% HP try and do that. Oh, no, not oh, Zanox? again. Zanox will be going a little deep here because Sim Sim is over the wall, but it's taking a little bit to get to Radar. Is now finally here. He's going to leap strike over to the ward. Zanox thought he was oh out, but he goes God, in he and he goes out. Oh, my kick. God! Holy crap! No! This guy's nuts! Radar's the next target, and the dunk is available for Jexor. <laughs> Now, Rallick is the one who's going to get oh. bared down on. They're going to try to turn it around on a sim song. Dunk him oh. again! Double kill for Jexor. Now, Zadox in a 1v1. Oh, wow. Too much longer. A max range hook, and it's a shutdown for Rallick. 
Sword Blue may have just saved that entire situation right there. That that timing on the back and being able to roam up in time, that was looking disastrous, right? That would have been a Zadox 2-0 at that point, taking out Relic as well. So heads up play by Fisher to rotate in. But man, Zadox is putting on a clinic right now. What an outplay. The Lee Syndrome is there. The Insect was clean if you so wish because it didn't even feel like it. Jex were able to pick up two in the back pocket. This is going to get out of hand very quickly. This top side, I said it again, and I'll say it one more time. I think it's out of control, and I think it's fully in Weaver's direction. Outside of Goku, still waiting for their first kill. Yeah, I mean, good. It's, it's You take the good with the bad, right? The yep. good is that Rollick gets two kills, gets a shutdown as well. The bad is that Jexor gets two kills himself. Zadox gets a pair of assists on top of it, too. It's looking pretty bad, even though the goal is fairly even. Again, as long as Fisher can just continue to hang on, let their carry scale up, they will be in a good spot. They just need yep. to make sure that things don't get too out of control as Zadox is going to make it a pay on a Relic, but misses a Q, which honestly I was surprised about. <laughs> it's one of those moments where you're like, oh, wow, I thought you would have hit that. You know, you've been hitting I thought him he all was night a god. long. Yeah, he is, but sometimes gods can bleed, especially when they're lazy and may have had too much to eat. You know, three kills can do that to you. Uh, Isn't that Goku... just Dionysus? Dionysus, <laughs> sorry, Dionysus. <laughs> yeah. uh, call listen, don't ask name. casters for pronunciations here. <laughs> we, well, I mean, we uh, listen, I should know that because I'm Greek. <laughs> Uh, taking a look at things though, I think a huge part of why Weaver was so successful in game one as well is Goku was allowed to actually roam out and accompany Zadox in certain situations, right? That LeBlanc started to show a lot of power behind. Goku hasn't actually been able to do that. So for this moment, I love the fact that you pointed out Rallic being able to keep in check has two kills of their own and all of a sudden the Ari is not as free any longer to be as mobile as they would like to be. Yeah, and you know, you get the first part of the queue out, but Rallic has been doing a good job to sidestep. Has those upgraded boots, which means that, you know, Ari can't really put down enough damage to force Rollick out of lane. So it, it, the lane really stops when Rollick is the one who wants it to, because you just can't let this Tristana push alone. Mm -mm. Tristana will be mowing down those turrets, and I mean, Radar now coming to the top side trying to help <laughs> Simpson out, clear out this wave, and maybe allow Simpson to actually roam down for the strike. I'm not sure what they're looking for. Well, it's at least to just get that wave in. They don't want it frozen on. They know no teleports available for either top laner, so they should be okay. Zadox has been spotted out. Mm -hmm. Definitely wants to try to do something here to DMK. DMK is a little late on the movement, but Zadox missing another Q. All of a sudden, this guy's going ice cold. Yeah, this is uh, this is the dangerous part of the game, right? If that Q lands, it's over. If it doesn't, then you're safe. But uh, not only that, the dragon should be taken very cleanly, and that's the main reason you're here. Uh, I was actually very surprised that DMK opted. You you saw the jungler on that ward in the pit. I'm surprised you actually opted to stay up and try and get a bit more CS. Yeah, I am too. But listen, mm. well, never mind. The plays getting made down here. His mother goose trying to get away, but that bio R came barrage from no, a long ways away. The big artillery didn't land. Teleport coming in. Is Sendy looking for the turn? Oh. Goku comes in, hits a huge charm, and is able to get Weaver another kill. See if his Adox wants to go in. It'd be a little crazy here. And that was Sword Blue and DMK trying to make a play because Zadox wasn't going to be there. It's going go. to continue as they're corralled right now. I'm kind of surprised they don't go for a little bit more, but it right. is the two strongest members of Fisher. You know, up on the top side, this means that Radar is able to get some grubs for himself, which will be the first grubs of the game that Fisher's actually able to take. Mm -hmm. And that, that evens it out. Oh. Zadox oh. might be caught. Yeah, Zadox thinks that everything's oh, okay. No! Oh, but he no! gets Tristana ulted away. Rollick's still trying to chase him down. Oh, no! He's not going to be able to. A miscue there from Fisher. Yo, honor the Tristana. Honor Rollick right there, Zadox. That was Rollick all day long. And that hook had landed. Zadox was 100% dead. Oh, oh that feels 100% bad. Now alive. Yeah, look at this. Now they're gonna now they're gonna come back, but <laughs> let's see if they're able to make the play here. They're gonna land the hook right onto Zadox, but well protected because of the Braum shield. But DMK forcing them off, relatively untouched as well. We are seeing Ari burn flash in the mid lane here, so it's a pretty big summoner down, especially while the ult's still down. Yep, and big part of this is Fisher are are actually pining for opportunities of their own. Both teams are actually fishing for opportunities, no pun intended to get those kills both teams actually have very scalable compositions that work off of those bloody uh, fights it's just no one's really 
allowing that to happen. That's where we see that mechanical play that we saw in game number one, but this time for both sides, right? Fisher are now looking much stronger and calculating, getting away from a lot of these dangerous positions. Weaver, also the same, getting out of dire straits without losing too many members. The fact that we only have 10 kills at this current moment should surprise quite a few people for how many attempts there have been. Yeah, and you just take a look at the breakdown by a lane here. I mean, it's 1,400 up top. It's 2,000 in the jungle. That's all in the favor of Weaver, but they're only up 2,500. So uh, Fisher has done a pretty good job in the mid lane, especially to kind of stem that bleeding. I am surprised the DMK is not as ahead as it really appears. Mm, and, and I think that might curve due to the fact that, you know, there, there has been other pressure down there. And... I mean, I, I say that, but now Zadok's roaming up to the south. Oh, Sim Sim, you're not in for a good time. Yeah, Sim Sim is going to be in for a bad time here. See what happens. Counter-Strike is available. Doesn't stun anybody. Goku dropping the ultimate. Oh coming my through. god. <laughs> they just land damn near everything on him. And they bully this man in taking him. And this is one of the most optimal scenarios. Weaver, again, drawing Fisher wherever they want to. Take a look at where Fisher are. They aren't really getting anything on the rest of the map. The most they're going to get is a blue buff and maybe some plates, but they actually might not even get that. Yeah, Sword Blue might be the one who gets got. Knockup comes down, and so come the roots. Mother Goose will be uh, rooted up, forcing the flash out of Sendy, and now Mother Goose is going to be the target, and they're going to get blown up. That's DMK who's able to pick that one up. I mean, it's a small price to pay. You got first brick in the top lane. You're more than okay with extra gold. There's nothing else they can really take. You did lose a tower. I call that a win out of Weaver's side, considering now you enable this Jex sword to kind of roam out and you even get back to try uh -oh. and get the enemy jungler. This is big. Yeah, that enchanted crystal arrow will certainly slow up Radar, and he's got to try yep. to double back to get on to Sendy, and that means Radar is doomed. Yeah, this is... I'm... Fisher, I don't want to say they're in desperation mode right now, but it does feel like they're getting forced into trying to salvage certain plays, but they don't really have to be. We talked about it, right? Dragon Ming Kim, just take a little bit more time. Scale up, get a few more items. Shastana is looking quite strong. However, you might get pinched here. The kick over the wall. Oh, uh oh, oh Ward hop back over. Rollick in so much trouble. We'll hop over. Oh try. my god! The Q lands the flash away. Winter's bite Do not it to there. Him. Can you land oh, one more okay. Q? DMK is here, but... Is not going to be able to chew through this Braum shield quite Oh yet. my Sword god! Blue, half HP, Sword the Blue's kill. dead. Goku from the backside oh is there. Oh my god! Oh, wiping out Fisher's bot lane! Call him John Wick or whatever you want to. It's a squadron of assassins to roam down here. Three! Three deaths with no one on Weaver's side. We said it, right? You called it out. You called me out. I didn't believe in Weaver. They did in game one. They accelerated the pace of the game to an unbreakable pace. And Weaver feel like they're doing it all off the back this time of Zadox, clean and simple. Yeah, Zadox has just played a, a wonderful game, honestly. One of the better mm -hmm. least in games that I have seen at this level. And Oh my god. Uh, well, you know, we know he's going <laughs> to die, so yeah. uh, you, you're so right about Fisher feeling like they were pressured to make some plays. Because before that fight in the bot lane even broke out, they were... They were Desperate to try to get something in a scenario where they didn't need to be. They could just allow themselves to scale, as you mentioned, and they haven't done that. And then they get caught out after making a bad play. It gets them even further and further behind. They just keep trying to climb up the mountain, but keep falling down. They're grabbing their own rocks along the way. Every single one of mm -hmm. them is a loose rubble piece. And, I mean, this is going to happen again, right? Three filtering into what could Goku's be on a dire flank. straight. Goku's yeah. on a flank. DMK is oh. the target. DMK has to flash away. Charm's coming out. They're going to get on top of Radar. Oh, now back on no, DMK. Zadox is doing his thing. Able to pick up a kill. Mother Goose taking a lot of damage. The arrow. Of Crystal arrow hits Rollick. And they're going to take him out, too. They get four kills. No deaths and a dragon for Weaver. <laughs> We're not on the freeway anymore. Weaver hit the Autobahn and just, there is no speed limit right now. There is zero speed limit to what they are doing. I am impressed, stunned, concussed, frozen in place. They are doing so well and their coordination is on point. They are entering into a state of what I like to call flow. Everything that they decide to do, they say, cool, let's go for it. There is no hesitation. There is no, should we do it or shouldn't we do it? It is, we know we can do it, so we will. And Fisher are left reeling. Yeah, every play is just working. And it just seems like Fisher has no answer. And I, they, you can scale into infinity in this game, and I don't know if they'll get there. I mean, I don't think they're going to get the opportunity because Weaver has done a really good job. You mentioned it in game one 
of closing out the game quickly. They need to do the same here because there's still that scaling threat over on Fisher. So 17 and a half minutes in, I can't believe we're talking about closing out the game, but you've, you're on soul point. You know, Jigsaw is just causing a problem for Rout. Like you can't side lane against the guy. He's five and one with a Trinity Force and a dead man. Yeah, we haven't even talked about this because this is going to happen again. Radar is not going to enjoy this fact, but I mean, this is Radar? this is just that kill. Uh, Jextor has had a radar. Oh, go okay, never mind. No, Hold on, Goku is going in, going out, getting a kill, flashing away, and lives to tell the tale. Pulls off a heist. Oh the level God. of hundred thieves. <laughs> All right, I didn't think anything was crazy was gonna happen. It did, and, and now go more crazy before. things are happening. Wait a minute. Okay, no. <laughs> I just want to hype him up a little bit to be quite. I know, I you. know, because we've been talking only about Zadox or certain players, and everyone on Weaver is doing their job right. If it's not Goku or Zadox, it's Jexor running pressure in a solo lane, right? You have to expend maybe one or two players. Ralic, who was doing quite well in the early game, had two kills a game, hasn't been able to do anything with it. Jexor has kept them down now. The allocation from Weaver is exceptional because they can pull off a 3-1-1 with their ADC in mid lane alone. Yeah, and Sendy is just going to be able to take this out of here. Come the roots. Go, oh, triple knock oh, the arrow. There's a chance no. to make a play here. Do they have enough damage? DMK can't get in there. He's slowed, trying to hit from downtown, but they're rallying from the side. He's going to be able to blow somebody up and get one. Looking for Mother Goose for two. Meanwhile, backside, Zadox kicks away DMK, but doesn't kill oh, him. Does manage to take out the Nautilus. More fighting on the backside. It's going to be Jax able to pick up Mother Goose. And now Sendy will be able to walk away. Nobody able to take him out, but this means that Darius was allowed to just chill out on the bot lane. And they were consolation prizes for those two kills, or the three that you expected, Radar. and possibly Radar lost as well. Yeah, that was freedom. He flashed. Freedom for Sendy. Sendy sends Radar into Oblivion, and they get everything, right? Three he kills. No, that's great. No, Rally. Oh, hold on. Rally jumping in onto Sendy. You need to pick this kill up. You're up two oh, levels. Okay. It okay. looked a little testy, but he got the job done. Yep. These are little bits and pieces that I, I applaud Fisher for grabbing, right? These are kills that you desperately needed. And yes, to me, Weaver is still ahead. They still have the towers. They're opening up the base. A couple kills here and there. Not going to make a big difference. For Fisher, this is a breath of fresh air. You just locked down a couple shutdowns. You knocked down one of the big players, Sendi, Goku, Zadox. You got that on primary target. This is great. This is step one of about 17 to 20 <laughs> that you have to hit, but at least you took that step. Yeah, the 17, Orbital 17 step program. <laughs> well, when you're down about 10K, yeah, that's, I call that a 17 step program. <laughs> the greatest journeys start with a single step. We'll see if Fisher is able to take a second step here because uh, they are very, very far behind, but still in it. You know, the game is not over yet. And again, we talk about their impressive scaling. Jesus. It's just a matter of making sure that uh, Weber doesn't take the Baron. I think they might be able to fight through uh, this Mountain Drake, to be quite honest with you, with the carries that they have. Mm -hmm. So to, to their point, I, and I do agree, the scaling is starting to come in here. We are hitting that 20 minute mark. Some kills went over and Fisher, do have the opportunity. Also, if Mother Goose keeps doing this, and you feed a little extra 200, Whoa. 200 in, it's pretty dang good. Yeah, going to burn that ultimate on Mother Goose. Rally going to get over the wall. They're going to dump everything they got into this guy, and they will be able to take him out. It's going to be a kill for DMK. No response from Weaver here. Well, on the top side, there was a tower. So mother, that was a bad play of my Mother Goose. Yes, you wanted to get vision down, but you didn't respect it. Bot side, we're still getting a fight, though. Yeah, the fight is breaking out. Roots are coming out. Charm onto Radar. Radar's going to get onto Zadox. Zadox is going to be the target, but oh, that means the no. carries can just oh, free hit all the key targets. Double oh. kill. There's one for Goku. There's one for your Ash as well, as Weaver just beat up the Falcons. We didn't even want to show it to you. I forced our observer to watch that go down, and I feel terrible for doing so. We were just talking up that Fisher were starting to get some kills. It's opportunities, right? Weaver overextended. They gave some over, but Weaver just rip us back to reality and say, don't drop gravity just yet. This is, this is what's happening on the map. We are strong. We are powerful. We have the gold in our pocket to take in optimal fights and still look good. You said that Fisher could fight through maybe a dragon or a soul. I don't think so at that point. Maybe there was a time, but with this healthy amount of gold, with the assassination power that Weaver have, Relic, DMK do not have the safety measures in place to stay alive in these team fights. Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with Sword Blues going in, radars going in, and that just means there's no protection. I mean, Relic's pathing there. You, you target Zadox, but you just let the carries free hit on you. They've got, you know, they're 
the CC, the Ash Ultimate. They've got the Charm from Ari as well. I mean, if you're not going to go cleanse, you need to be able to know where those carries are to be able to sidestep. And, you know, I, I don't think this is a part of the 17-step program. They've, they've taken the one step forward. They've gone four steps back. And right. Well, not so much take steps back. It's more like shoved down the stairs, unfortunately. Like, this, this is true. They have been shoved down the stairs. <laughs> Honestly, I, it looks like Fisher needs life alert right now. Yeah, this is Weaver now, like, they, they can take whatever they want, right? And I think this is an appropriate answer. Go for Baron. You don't care about this bottom lane. It's whatever. You need the Baron to actually cruise in and take the uh, take the actual base and break open that last inhibitor, some of the rest. You're okay giving up these towers because all it means is like, oh, you know, they're somewhere where we know they're at. They're not at base, which we can now start crushing. Yes, this is an extra, I want to say, uh, about 600, I want to say 700 gold uh, in, in some pockets here. It's not bad. It's not... I think unless Weaver decide to like walk in one by one, like I say again, gladiator style, it's not really going to make that big of a difference. Well, Fisher can hang on and not give up the Nexus turrets or the Nexus. This is pretty okay for them. <laughs> they will. Yeah, no, just don't lose the game for him. They oh, are going to engage go. <laughs> though. You see if Sword Blue is going to do more. Knock up coming through. Carries the target. Flashes away. Looking to get in more. Oh, is this Jax? Figure. But he just gets blown oh, up. Oh, the arrow! Who again! gets targeted? Rollick gets hit with the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. They're on top of him. He's very low. DMK trying to live, but he gets kicked to the side. Oh my and God. they wipe out the Falcons. Triple kill for Jexors. And that is it. That will do it. Weaver State comes in, smacks up the Falcons a little bit, and they take a dominating series, two to nothing. They clinch first place. That means they want to have to see pace in the playoffs for some time. That's a team that handed them their only game loss on the season. 48 minutes. 48 minutes is the grand total of time it took for Weaver to take down Fisher. I timed it. I don't normally do this. If it goes over an hour, that's whatever. Under 50 minutes, Weaver put on a clinic. And again, I do not sit here and say Fisher played horribly or anything like that. This is small mistakes that occurred at the beginning that excellent teams take advantage of and will punish you forever for. That is what I think it happened. Uh, game one, it was the entire team for Weaver. Game two, I think Zadox popped off and started to sp spread the wealth a little bit there. So huge props like Weaver and Fisher just weren't allowed to keep up. Yeah, it, it was just utter domination. There's just not much more that you can say other than a really fantastic series out of Weaver. I, I mean, this is a roster out of the side of Fisher that we've seen win, right? This is a combination of players that have won games at this level. They are all excellent, but Weaver were just the better team on this day. Congratulations to them. They made it look easy. They earned that first place, and I can't wait to see what they do in the playoffs. We're going to take a very short break. We're going to hopefully get an interview from one of the members of Weaver, but we will see. And when we return, hopefully we'll have an interview for you. Don't go anywhere. Fun saves lives.
Welcome back, everybody, to ECAC Week 7, the final week of the regular season. We just saw a fantastic match between Weber and Fisher Falcons. It was fantastic for Weber, I should say. It was absolute <laughs> drubbing. They really showed up. And we do have an interview with the AD carry from Weber, Cindy. Cindy, how are you doing? Hope things are well. Congratulations on your win. Absolutely. Doing fantastic. Thanks for having me. Uh... Yeah, pretty profound win, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, it was absolutely crazy. I mean, you guys, you know, this this program seemed to have the number of Fisher League, right? Won a 3-2 series in the semifinals of fall 2023. Uh, getting this win in the regular season. How is it when you know that you're locked for playoffs and you have to go play this last game of the season, but it's a fight for first place? You know, what's what goes through the mindset, right? Are you like, hey, we're really gunning to win this game, even though we're already locked for playoffs? Or is it like, ah, you know, we're going to play them. We're going to play our best. But if we win, we win. And if we don't, we don't. <laughs> Honestly, healthy mix of both. <laughs> um, I think in particular game one, we were very focused as a whole. But uh, <laughs> I will admit that was one of our sports first games on Braum in a very long time. <laughs> So I think we were a little confident enough after game one where we were being a little more silly in game two. I mean, I mean, we could see it. And, and let's be honest, there was a moment in game one that scared the ever-living pants off of me. There was a little bit of messing around in the enemy jungle uh, <laughs> that, that got Zadox killed when he didn't win the 50-50 smite. Uh, yep. What, yep. What were the comps for that? What Was there was there surprise? Was there fear? What was going on through yeah, there? Yeah, just for clarification, are you referring to the uh, the level one, level two? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was actually kind of funny because everything was really smooth. Uh, I was communicating with my support bot lane just about, you know, the 2v2, like play this minion, yada, yada, yada. And then I just hear Gunnar go, oh, wait, he's right here. <laughs> he started <laughs> red. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh. And he's like, I think I'm dead. I was like, yeah, is what it is. And then he led them on a wild goose chase, which ended up being pretty good for top lane. So it wasn't the end of the world. <laughs> it was one of those moments that were like, we should... Uh, I, I'm not sure if this is going to impact mental, but you guys really bounced back. And what you guys showed us is this concise ability to understand when you're ahead and then just power through. And even in game two, you, it, from anyone else's standpoint, you would have been even throughout the entire game up to about, you know, 13, 14 minutes. And then you guys broke mm -hmm. away. Did you guys feel completely in control? As you said, you were feeling a little bit more frisky in that game too. Mm -hmm. What was that idea? Because it, it felt like there was a moment it just hit and you guys just took off 80 miles an hour. Um, I think it honestly was just the point where we had certain items and we started walking around as a team, because I think particularly with R4 versus their four, even though Maokai and Nautilus can generally create a lot of space, I think versus when you're playing versus like three, four different champions that can heavily pressure two different AD carries, it's really hard to effectively do anything. So we just looked to force fights around those timers. And obviously, when they're playing double carries, keeping track of flash timers is a big one. And that was part of it, I think. Is certainly something that is really important. Got to make sure that you're able to make the plays on good timers. I want to pull your attention away from today's game and actually talk about what you guys have been doing in the Western Conference this year for CELAW. I mean, you guys have done pretty well for yourselves, managed to make it into the playoffs. A strong 5-2 and two record uh, in a group that was really, really tight. And your first playoff match is going to be against the University of Alberta. They came out of that UCI group. You know, they're six and one. How uh, how you feeling going into that match? What are your expectations for this playoff run? You making it to the Sea Law Championship or what? Oh yeah, hundred percent making it to Sea Law Championship. No doubt in my mind there. Oh, um, I love to hear that. <laughs> to, so to get a little more specific though, Alberta, I'm not concerned about at all. Um, on a different week, maybe. I think uh, our group was pretty bloody, as you pointed out. <laughs> it was uh, one win or one loss in a series was the difference between like first seed and fourth seed, pretty much. Uh, and I think we were really shaky during the regular season of CLOL, but we ironed out some kinks and we figured out what works really well for us. And I think as long as we don't deviate from that or do anything silly, we are going to surprise people in uh, the West playoffs. Well, I will certainly be having my eye out for that as, you know, trying to put all my eyeballs on the CLL playoffs. <laughs> Absolutely. So good luck for those. Cindy, thank you very much for being here, having this interview with us. Congratulations once again on your victory. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, everybody, that will do it for us here tonight. However, we do have a very important event occurring this Sunday. Esports, you and I, this is a stream that will be starting at 1 p.m. Eastern. It is a 
Valorant female nine binary CECC event. It's a really important event. We'd like to see everybody getting out there, supporting our marginalized genders in the space, uh, and also watching some really good Valorant. Valorant's a really fun game to watch, even though I don't really play it as much. I've been, I've been having the itch lately, though. So please we'll, go we'll check that out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please. No, I'm terrible. But please go check out players that will be much better than me at this game. 1 p.m. Eastern. That will be this Sunday night. But that will be it for us here this evening. So for myself, my co-caster Orbital, our guest Sendy with the interview, Colton, Professor Layton, Sam Mantha Price behind the glass. Thank you all so much for being here with us tonight. We hope to see you on Sunday for that Valorant event. See you soon.